Greetings and welcome to the introduction to astronomy. One of the things that I like to do in each of my introductory astronomy classes is to begin the class with the astronomy picture of the day from the NASA website that is apod.nasa.gov apod. And today's picture for May the 22nd of 2020, well, it is titled South of Carina. So what do we see here? Well, this is part of one of the large star, largest star-forming regions within the Milky Way, which is the Great Carina Nebula. And we're looking at a relatively small section of it, uh, very close to the star, although not pictured in here, the star Eta Carinae, which is a very large and unstable star that has only formed recently, but like many massive stars, will not live very long, so will therefore become a supernova sometime in the near future. What could mean anything from within the next hundred years to within the next few thousand years? Astronomically speaking, a very, very short time for a star to live. Now, within the star-forming region, we see a lot of gas and dust. The gas here is illuminated and glows in various colors, and those colors are looking at the emission of three specific elements. So this is what we call a narrow band image. We are just looking at very narrow wavelengths uh, that are then highlighted here. And in this case, we are looking at the emission of sulfur in red, hydrogen in green, and oxygen in blue. So it shows us the regions where those specific atoms are excited. Now that doesn't mean that those atoms are concentrated there. It simply means that those are the regions where those atoms are at the right state to be excited. So I can tell you that the gas there is pretty much all hydrogen gas, but there are some regions where the temperatures are not sufficient to excite the hydrogen, but may be able to excite oxygen or sulfur, which is one of the reasons we look at nebulae like this, so that we can study them uh, across different portions of the spectrum, and it allows us to see material that would not otherwise be easily visible. Now, within the star-forming region, we also see some dark, dusty knots of material, and those are areas where stars are currently forming. And you can see some of them uh, down towards, especially towards the lower portion of this image, long tendrils sticking out. Uh, at, the peak, at the peak of some of these would be a star in the process of formation, and the material behind it is material that is getting eaten away by the other stars that have already formed around this area. So as stars form, their great stellar winds push away material, and the densest knots remain because they are the denser areas and still able to survive, whereas the less dense area, less dense material starts to get swept away. So a star-forming region is really a battle between stars and dust and gas. The stars form from the gas and dust around, and then once they form, they eat away at the gas of dust, decreasing the level of star formation and pushing it out into other uh, regions of the uh, nebula. So eventually, you would have regions cleared out by the stars and just see a small young star cluster, although this process would take hundreds of thousands of years. So not something that we would see next year or even a hundred or a thousand years from now. But over a hundred thousand years, we would begin to see a lot of the nebula that we see now disappear and new regions begin forming further away. So that was our picture of the day for May the 22nd of 2020. It was titled South of Carina. We'll be back again tomorrow for the next picture, previewed to be a ghostly glow. So we'll see what that is about tomorrow. And until then, have a great day, everyone, and I will see you in class.